Hello everyone, welcome to the Genesis Home Podcast, where we talk to experts in real estate, finance, business, community, and beyond, covering topics that are important to us. Let's listen in. Hi everyone, this is Rita of the Genesis Home Podcast, as you guys know. And a very special guest is actually coming back. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Rita. How are you? Good. This is, once again, this is a really cool moment because I love the fact that the people that were there from the very beginning of this (laughs) are kind of there at the end because there's so much that's happening behind the scenes that... I get to share it with you know, the people that are very close to me, and you're one of those people. So thank you for this. Thank you for having me, and I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be here, and um, uh, from the beginning all the way to now, you know, it's been a journey. So um, I'm happy to share it. A lot has changed since you were on here last. You know, yeah. we started out with you know just building you know your business and everything and now you're you're just essentially like a real estate finance mogul guy so why don't you explain <laughs> what this new Kyle or the new the, the, this, the update what's the update um I've definitely come a long way since I last been on um, you know I was rebranding and you know the update in the progress is now is I've taken the business to a whole other level and um, although I am a residential real estate agent, um, I still, you know, am uh, pursuing commercial deals as a residential agent. And in doing so, um, you know, I've been able to acquire uh, land development because as residential agents, as you know, we can we can sell land. And, you know, if someone wants to build a building on that land, you know, that land is going to be worth, you know, uh, quite some value. So since then, you know, um, of course, I've um, received an influx more clients and, uh, you know, I've done way more sales, you know, with buyers and sellers, uh, mostly investors. And now I find myself working with developers. Um, So I'm trying to stay concentrated um, for everyone out there. You know, if you just have one developer, I mean, that right there is, is, is enough to keep you busy, you know, so Having multiple developers uh, to work with is, is just taking your business to the whole new level. So that's why I am now. My business is at a whole new level with um, now welcoming developers to my my business. And um, pretty much, you know, what they do is, you know, they purchase these buildings, um, you know, most of the time raise the rent and um, occupy all of the units. So uh, right now, my biggest project that we're working on right now is a 240 unit development um that you know i can't talk too much about it so under negotiation and stuff um you know under contract and and whatnot but um we're looking to of course occupy all 240 luxury units in the hudson county area of uh, jersey city and these developers are actually from new york from brooklyn brooklyn <laughs> so New that's what's keeping me busy right now. New York and New Jersey will always be siblings when it comes to okay. food, real estate, and money. <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt. The great thing about you, Kyle, specifically, is that you found a way to build a build something that. In an industry that's very kind of very staid, you know, it's very like regiment. It's not regimental, but it's very formal. And you built something that that's very welcoming at the same time. And one of the things that I thought was really cool was your social media presence. As someone who does have the communication skills and everything, you built a a platform on your you built a platform on your account, especially with on um, Instagram and YouTube and like a lot of things that you keep it pretty positive. How did you manage that during a time period where social media can get very toxic? 
That is an excellent question. And um, the answer is actually very simple. Um, you know, uh, with the social media, you, you really get to choose and decide what you engage in and what you share. And being that social media is very toxic and, you know, people pretty much go to it to, you know, to feed the drama or to see what's going wrong in the world, you know, same reason why people will tune into any media or um, on the TV, they way they'll tune into any social media on the phone. And um, how I keep that kind of uniform and how I keep the platform and the brand, you know, to a certain standard is I don't feed into the toxicity. I don't reshare or repost anything negative. I'm a very positive person and I like to keep that good energy and that positivity. I stay away from, you know, anything toxic, anything drama, you know, anything that's kind of unnecessary. Um, and I focus and I focus and I concentrate on the content that actually matters. So I focus and I concentrate on the content that is uh, goal oriented. So I don't post anything that's meaningless. I sit forward, you know, and I stick to something that actually means something is purposeful. So a lot of my content uh, gears towards making people and people's lives better. A lot of motivational quotes, uh, just, you know, a lot of excellence, you know, and, and I try to steer away from anything that takes away from the excellence. And I hold true to that integrity. Um, and that's pretty much my social media presence is, you know, people see me and and I'm posting and they know that if I have a story up or a post, it's gonna be something that they wanna see because it's gonna be something that makes them feel good. It's not necessarily talking about me and myself, more so talking about others and their accomplishments and more so me marketing and advertising my inventory and my business. So it's pretty motivational, pretty positive. And, um, I steer away from the drama and negativity. Some people thrive from that, but I'm in, um, I'm a different kind of brand and individual and, and um, I'm true to myself. So I really uh, stay focused on what I'm posting and make sure that it's in line with who I am as a person, as an individual. So they do get a taste and a hint and they know who I am, of, you know, the type of person that I am and that I'm being. So I am myself on my social media, uh, which is uh, the secret that's not really the secret, which is, you know, as cliche as it sounds, you know, be yourself and be authentic, stay true to who you are and have integrity, you know, don't steer away from who you are. So for you, what was really important was the fact that the person that they meet, because the problem that I know in the common social media is the same person, which is your question. <laughs> You know, we, like I said, social media can be very, very toxic in a way because people are trying to build personas. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I know there are a few wrestling fans out there. Some people you have like this guy's name is you have like the guy who's actually like the, you know John Cena's name is actually John Cena, but there's also John Cena, the the image. You know. Yeah. You built something that when they meet you in person it matches your social media. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Why is that part? Of, okay, so, and this is, this is a very weird question to ask, but I'm gonna ask it. Why didn't you build a media persona? And why did you pick just beating Kyle? Because you could have. I mean, we're not, you're not going to be the first person in real estate to have a, a media yeah. presence and all this kind of stuff. You could have, but you didn't. You mm -hmm. opted to be a little more genuine in your in your growth. So why? Mm -hmm. I can absolutely um, create an alter ego. I can absolutely become a different person on a different platform. But you know, I'm I'm more so comfortable and more so naturally best as myself. Whereas um, I don't necessarily um, think that it, it won't be in my best interest to do so, but I do know my natural flow and frequency is just how I perform. Because um, it's very simple for me to say, okay, let me put on this hat today and wear these shoes today and be this kind of person for this event or or for for this episode or for this post and and i can absolutely do that um of course if it's strategic
strategically in line with my goal and where I'm trying to be and where I'm headed and what I need to execute, I can absolutely do that. And, and sometimes I do, but I will always revert back and stay true to who I am. And um, that seems to work best for me than when I, I'm putting on uh, a facade, if you will, or uh, stepping into my alter ego, if you will. And, you know, I can actually succeed by uh, being myself a majority of the time rather than shifting persona. That's, that's a good way to bring up the next question. Trolls. <laughs> We, we, we live in a time period that they are not going to go away. And then add on, you have trolls, but you also have missed a lot of misinformation, especially about our industry. You know, how many times have we seen on social media, you know, you can buy this house for, for, no, for no money and never have to pay ever again. We all know that's not realistic. Either you're paying on the front end or you're paying on the back end. Or... You know the a lot of this the the google scams or the google experts as we know them and we sometimes get approached with about them on social media so how do you address the that level of crazy i would say toxic but it's crazy this is crazy this is crazy so let me make sure I got this right, just to make sure I answer this according. So you're saying that there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and then how do I handle people receiving that misinformation as, as, as if it's valid? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, definitely every single day, every time I talk to someone new, I either educate them or they educate me. And as people in a society, in this ecosystem, especially the social ecosystem, it's like telephone, we don't want to pass around incorrect or wrong information. And even then, people should not take information and believe everything they hear, first of all. And people should really do their own research and, and their own resources. But as our job as civil servants and, you know, in real estate and helping people gain wealth and helping people move around and relocate and purchase assets. It's our duty to kind of be their expert and inform them and educate them. And where, you know, I personally will not provide misinformation. And if I hear misinformation, I will, you know, I, I have to correct it. You know, to, to, you know, if it's a client, it's kind of my fiduciary duty to make sure they're not, you know, thinking the wrong thing or and I, I honestly tell you it's not that big of a deal uh, on a day-to-day -day basis so it's really good for everyone to kind of just help people you know understand what's myth and and what's real and it's really not difficult for me you know if someone says something and they don't know something i'm like oh it, it this is actually how it works or you know this is that's actually not true and and go into depth and explain it it's not a bad thing unless you're dealing with a self-righteous person it's really easy to just be like oh this is actually how it works you know um and best case scenario the correct information is received but of course all information anyone receives should also be validated by that individual um i was never someone to just believe you know everything that i'm told you know, I'm, I'm always someone who will go to like the empirical data, which is the most primary source of where that knowledge can be validated. And um, I learned that from um, my university, you know, we couldn't just write a paper and write anything on that paper and, and submit it. We had to cite sources of where that information could be validated so we know that it's truth and that it's accurate. So um, that can be used as an advantage and, you know, to make content with and to educate others. But it's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is we just, we should educate each other and not whatever the opposite word of educate is. <laughs> we should not be doing that. You know, we should stick to, to the correct information. Do you think it's important, especially as someone who is building a social media community, 
as a real estate professional to get to be accessible when it comes to educating or addressing misinformation? Yeah, I mean, um, anything controversial isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but of course, if you're on social media, it may be in your best interest to um, target some of this information, this misinformation, and um, elaborate on it, make it a little bit more specific. And um, a lot of posts that educate or influence or empower others usually get the most engagement. So when um, you're being true, when you have the truth, it's best to share that truth because you know there are others and there are people out there that don't know. Uh, just like there are people out there that don't even know what questions to ask or what information to know. You know, people don't know what they don't know. So when you tell them something and they now know it, you know that is going to help the their bond and relationship with your presence. Okay. Now, I was I asked this question a lot, especially people who have like large social media communities or building those type of communities. The topic of influencer. Do you consider yourself an influencer? Um, I wouldn't consider myself an influencer just yet at, at the level that I'm aspiring to be, but I will say that I am an influencer. And I, I have to be um, in in my career, and I just won't, you know, accept anything aside from that because that's what I see for myself. That's what I want for myself. And it's not more so just about what I want. It's more so just me tapping into who I am as a person, and just um, you know, kind of unleashing that or shining and being that. Um, but I, I'm not at the level where I want to be, but I consider myself influencer, yes, because I have to be. Um, it's just what I do and it's who I am, and um, it's just part of my skill set. Um, so I would say yes, but not at the level that I'm aspiring to be. Um, but I would still, you know, keep that hat on and those shoes of uh, that influencer, and I do get results. Um, from my presence and from my influence. So I will continue to, um, you know, exploit my skills until they evolve to where I'm aspiring them to be. What would be your step? What would be considered influential? And what, what would be considered to you that you've arrived as someone? Who, okay. Best way to explain this. I view you as an influencer, oddly enough. <laughs> and but what would achieve that status for you? That, that's that's a better question. What would achieve that status for me um, yeah. would be when I can get to the point of um, my audience being my. Um, targeted preferred audience whereas right now um my audience uh, is pretty much uh, lacking developers so um of course i have a few in mind a few that i work with but what will get me to that point where i want to be is where i can actually um be closer and you know have influence over um, a large amount of development companies and developers, whereas um, my presence now, my influence now is more so with buyers, sellers, and renters, investors, um, not so much developer heavy. So I'll be where I wanna be when I can influence um, development and developers on a, a higher level than one or two every one or two years. You know, I, I'd like to perhaps every other month or so would be nice. 
even you know every week or every month or you know every year i would love to build you know these buildings and communities and you know um, arrange uh, these locations to you know to just look completely different and and really make um make make use of this land and communities and make everything look um like the developer's vision like my vision you know like a utopia so that would be the level that i'm trying to get to is uh, you know when i can, can really influence multiple developments multiple locations you know simultaneously as opposed to one here and there you know so i'm getting there i'm getting there but you know that's where i want to be so influence for you is not necessarily a superficial thing, but influence for you is more of the contributory and using social media to help contribute to that, to the development of your company. Exactly, exactly. That influence to me is um, utilizing the platform for your goals and um, not only your goals for yourself, but your goals for humanity, you know, and, and actually using the platform and your influence to do good and to do something impactful and purposeful. That to me is an influencer. You know, it's the interesting thing is when you and I first started talking, like we, we, we kind of met through like obviously other like through the community already. But the mm -hmm. one thing that you and I started talking about was that you have a background in finance, but you also have a background in marketing and communication already like even before you, you got your license and everything you came with so much knowledge and, and um, a sense of commitment to community already mm -hmm. do you think that being part having those skill sets already kind of shaped your business when it comes to not just the business itself but your social media presence is at, at the same time absolutely i think it all plays a role in um who i am and um the skills that are natural or natural talents that emerge when we are our authentic true self as well as um my background in marketing and communications and um you know, my my expertise in finance and real estate, you know, um, I do have the dual capacity of both industries and I'm licensed in both industries. And um, I use those certifications as well as those credentials and education, as well as my natural skills and talent. It all merges into one being that is me, that um, I utilize myself, of course, to make this impact and be that influencer and um, build these developments and i'm not doing the building you know i'm more so doing the negotiating and the selling but i'm a part i'm a, a moving active essential part to um the result that um, not only i envision but the, the development companies envision and that the developers envision um whether what State, no matter what country you're in, you know, a development is, is one of the, the greatest investments, you know, that's next level, it's high level, it's um, mass income producing um, investment and asset um, that's generational wealth. So uh, this is definitely uh, one thing I, I was educated on and one thing that I focused on is that's the finance section of my brain, that generational wealth, and then I'll merge with the real estate part of my brain, which is um, the building and the development and uh, the investment and uh, making sure that people can acquire wealth. Interesting thing is you mentioned the, the versatility and you know, what your how do you apply your skills to many things to achieve this goal of encouraging people of understanding the importance of generational wealth and everything and that leads me to a a question that's been on my mind for a while 
I was on, I, I look at your social media quite often, as you know, but <laughs> the thing out there that I've always wanted to know more about, and I think this is a good chance to talk about it, and that is the American Dreamers Club. Yes. I yes. saw it. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> and, you know, I follow them and everything, but, and congratulations on that as well. Thank and you so much. I thought that that would be a good, this would be a good chance to explain why, while we're talking about social media, about the importance of building a community, not just off screen or off app, <laughs> but yeah. in online as well, because you're also on, you know, you're not just on Instagram, but you're also on you know, doing, you know, Clubhouse. You're, you're really taking social media, building this this financial safe space at the same time. And part of that I'm noticing is that you are now, you know, the executive director for the club. So I would like to know more about that, to be honest with you. I thought this would be a great chance to talk about that while discussing social media as well. Absolutely. Um, American Dreamers Club, as some of you may or may not know, uh, is where I serve as um, executive director. And this is a financial, not only a financial consulting heavy uh, business, but also a life changing business to many, many clients. And um, this uh, presence that I have in this company allows me to provide an, another level of service to my clients where not only um, can they receive um, a whole financial makeover, uh, an entire rebudget, you know, and, and um, this, it's a very amazing company and um, I work closely with Nakai Lewis, who is my business partner um in american junior she is the president and ceo and uh, they really take amazing care of the clients and they sit down with them and they really dissect their finances whether you're making six figures seven figures five figures or four the bottom line is, is you know we go over every single thing financially that's going on with you and we position you to uh, become more um financially um, where you want to be. So um, it's very, very important for everyone to, to go to the doctor and it's very important for everyone to have their financial checkup as well. Just like you have your physical every year um, or every month or whatever the case may be, you wanna have your financial checkup every month and, and every year, every three months or to get to where you wanna be in terms of your health and to, where, to get to where you wanna be in, in terms of your financial wealth. So that company uh, will dear to my heart, and um, you know I'm operating and working uh, every day with clients and customers and, and people who need to reposition their wealth, or even if it's not wealth, you know, reposition their finances so that they can accomplish their goals. Right? Because we can't really go anywhere, you know, without money. <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> essential because you know we need that in order to you know step forward and towards our goals and to get the things and acquire the things that are going to make us wealthier um so that's the american dreamers club and um in terms of the social media and uh, building a platform and um as the executive director i focus heavily on the marketing of the uh the company and the direction um, so pretty much what we want to show is that anyone can live the American dream. You know, anyone can make it. And, and it all starts with um, how you how you spend and how you think and and what you spend on. And, you know, are you acquiring um, expenses? Are you acquiring assets? Are you acquiring, are you acquiring liabilities? Who's involved? You know, is there a certain product or investment uh, purchase or package that is going to bring you to where you want to be? You know, it's a, it's a very strategic financial consultation, but also just a wealth checkup 
And um, that combined with um, real estate really empowers individuals to, to live that American dream, to buy their, their home or their first home or to buy their investment or their first investment. And that's really where finance and real estate become one. Um, and of course, you can follow at American Dreamers Club on Instagram, um, as well as my account, which is at Kyle D G R A. That's K Y L E D G R A, which stands for Kyle D Great. And you can see all of this uh, amazing content and um, uh, stuff that it is discussing here um, and bringing to our attention with the American Dreamers Club. No problem, because like said social media will always play a role. In New York. Social media will always play a role in in our businesses, and I mean it's it's not going to go anywhere. Go anywhere. I mean, but the thing that your profile does is highlight the versatility behind the lessons, which is something you know I'm a huge advocate of. I think people don't see what they can do once they achieve a certain goal or the flexibility is behind that opportunity. You know, when I, I really have to say, when when you and I first met, it was like, it was like, it was like a night and day moment for the both of us. But <laughs> we were still still in a way trying to figure out how to explain or incorporate who we are in this industry. And your social media is a great journal experience of what that meant from the beginning to who you are today. And here's my elephant in the room question. How do you explain to people that you are not bound by the traditions that are normally marketed when it comes to real estate? Because I mean, you and I both know this. There's so many specialties and interests. You talked about land development. You talked about investment. You talked about generational wealth. You talked about social media marketing forms of listing updates and you know addressing misinformation. How do you explain real estate in this day and age and incorporate that in your genuine business because that's what you have you have a genuine business it's just, that's what it is it's not you're not faking anything this is who you are mm -hmm. so how do you explain real estate and that you can still be yourself in this industry and incorporate all the other things like finance social media communication brand awareness mm -hmm. how do you explain that um, merging all of those those skills and my background together um, and providing the explanation I'm about to and how I talk to my clients and how I explain is, is pretty much so that, um, one, I take care of their initial needs. Um, so if they come to me for um, a purchase, you know, I will address that initial need. They come to me for a rental, I'll address that initial need. If they come to me for land or development, so on and so forth. But I also provide the resources to them and uh, simply explain, depending on where they are, um, certain people don't necessarily need the same explanation as someone else who already understands of the way of the world, uh, the way of the economy. But if I were to explain to someone, you know, very simply, who does not yet have that generational wealth, it would be um, as simple as, you know, let's take care of your initial needs. And, you know, do you see yourself owning in the future? And do you see yourself wealthy in the future? You know, do you um, want this for yourself? Do you want this for your family? It goes into your goals. And the explanation is very much so that can you see yourself here? Because the only way you're gonna get there is if you see yourself there and you have hope that you will get there and you take the actions necessary. And then I provide them with the actions necessary to get to where they see themselves. Whether it be to purchase um, a different form of property or whether it be to purchase a policy 
whether it be to invest in a, a development with partners or whatever the case may be, the explanation is that um, if you see yourself there, you can't see yourself there, you can be there, you know, let's, let's do it. This is the next step. This is what you have to do, you know, schedule an appointment here, let's consult on what you have to do there, you know, put your money in this place or um, save this and so we can do this. You know, I have all of the human resources right at my fingertips, the financial consultant, the lending company, the banks, the agents, the, the landlords, you know, the sellers, um, the, the intermediaries, I have everything in my power to help them take that action. So the explanation is, you know, I am that support to get them to, to where they see themselves, but they need to be able to see themselves there. You know, they, they really need to know what they want and really need to believe in themselves, you know. Um, and, you know, this day and age, that's pretty much um, where your mind has to be to get to where you want to go. You got to see yourself there and then meet with someone like myself who can be the support to push you to the actions necessary to get you to where you see yourself, you know, and, and that is, is what I explain is wherever you want to be. And like I said, it's a different explanation for every person that's in a different situation, but to get to where you want to be is where, you know, is where you're going to have to see yourself and what you're going to have to do to get there. That if that makes sense. No, it does because there's so much, it's, it's not an easy answer in any form. Because if you think about it, there's so much that goes into the real estate arena. I mean, if you're a buyer, what does that entail for you? If you're a seller, what does that entail for you? If you want to build generational wealth, what does that entail for you? And it's, but for me, those questions are really important, especially for someone of your caliber, because you do so much. Like, I was not really exaggerating that much when I said that you kind of built, like, that is your expertise of how to bridge real estate and finance in a way that is accessible. And part of that is explaining what it is past the curtain, like, behind the curtain. Because I can, you, I can only imagine what people assume when they say, when you say, I'm a real estate agent. You know, oh, Lord. exactly. <laughs> so if I can only, if, if, so for you to take the time out to explain to them, yes, I, I am a licensed agent and yes, I am licensed by the state of New Jersey and I do buy and sell property, but it's more to it than that. I just can't randomly give you stuff, but like that's not how this works. So mm -hmm. I always ask people, how do they explain this rather complex, often not marketed correctly, a kind of industry. This cosmetology you get, like you understand why there's breakers and like, you know, colorists, like they, it's there. We don't have that. And then we have social media on top of that, where we have to market our listings and our behind our brands and all this other stuff. So I always ask, as someone who, who is a real estate agent and is a finance expert and understands the importance of brand awareness and all of this, how do you guide them through that? So you did answer the question and you answered in a way that needed to be said, that each situation is not the same. There's no one answer. And thank you for that. And the thing I love about, about your answers is that immediately they're, they're, they hit close to home. Everything you every, sometimes when you talk, there's a there's a holiness about it. like it, it, I, it's it's something that people need to understand that nothing is one dimensional. Mm -hmm. And which leads me to my next question, or I would love your opinion on is where do you see real estate investment going 
in this time period because we seen a lot of people do DIYs. I mean, you've seen TikTok, like we see all these yes. people that want to be more hands on, and yeah. you know, we we see the numbers all the time about the market and things shifting. But where do you see real estate investment going forward? Um, of course, it's very just like the last question was very like goal oriented, specific. This question is um, very um, economic oriented, specific. So it's like, where are what location, you know, um, in, in that location, what is producing uh, the best return, or what do we foresee producing the best return? Um, what kind of businesses and what kind of areas are performing the best? Uh, what kind of properties and what kind of areas are people wanting to purchase or, you know, so let's say we're here in, in New Jersey. Let's say we're here in New York, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely going to say uh, where I, the, I see uh, good in, uh, investments or where I see investments going is sort of for the businesses that are um, self-maintained. A good example would be like a storage or self-storage, these types of massive development investments that run itself, that produce an amazing income. Um, I'm definitely an, ad an advocate for storage and self-storage. And um, if you're listening in on this and you're hearing this and you have the capacity to be a partner in the purchase of a self-storage unit, you're guaranteed um, well, I mean, you're not going to lose money by owning a self-storage facility. That's just going to give you a humongous return, um, you know, and if I can foresee anything, you know, being a good investment in this metropolitan area, that would be one thing that's a, a you know, really golden nugget right there and a huge opportunity. Um, it literally runs itself and and brings in a massive return and it's like having several units that you rent out just like if you were building a building and you needed to rent out the units to tenants it's the same thing with self-storage except you know there really is no no people involved technically speaking right um it's all self-regulated um and that would be um in, on the commercial side of things, on the residential side of things, um, I definitely uh, foresee uh, multifamily homes. Um, any in, in a multifamily is anything, uh, of course, on the residential side, like five units or under, mm -hmm. um, being one of the, the greater types of investments. If you're going to purchase a property, of course, you would you would. Um, or investment, you would want as many units you can get in that property, uh, you know, as you possibly can, because you can rent out obviously each unit within that dwelling. So I definitely see that being very big, uh, three, four, five family uh, units. You know, two families, pretty much the standard. Um, like you know, starting off and probably more affordable, uh, but of course, you know. You never know for the same price where you can get a three, four, or five family unit that people want to move into, and you will have instant cash flow and, and uh, instant liquidation. Um, and whether you purchase something residential for investment, or whether you purchase 10 units uh, as a commercial um, investment, um, the bottom line is, is the more doors, more units that you're able to acquire, um, the more cash flow and liquidation and, and rent roll you'll have coming in. So um, what I see in um, it being the best to invest in, I would say would be in like self-storage. Um, some of my business partners here in New Jersey will definitely advocate for that. <laughs> and also in, um, you know, uh, multiple unit residential dwellings. Um, you know, I'm sure someone like Grant Cardone is a huge advocate for that. And I only see something like this uh, being more and more popular as more and more people, uh, you know, become educated on wealth. 
and real estate investing, these are the investments that uh, are going to be targeted for the biggest return. You know, it's an interesting thing is this is the second time I've heard someone talk about the like, role of advocacy going forward. Because um, Jason was on here you know, not too long ago, and we were talking about that as well. That going forward, you're going to see more agents think take more of a, a state, like they have more standards. And you'll see more of them take on, like, become more advocates for real estate as opposed to just sellers. Do you agree with that? Something tells me I should ask you a question. I missed the, the last word you said, the last two words. Do you think going forward, you're going to see yourself be more of a advocate as opposed to the traditional seller going forward in real yeah. estate? Absolutely. Oh my God. Absolutely. I don't just look at myself as like a salesperson. Like I am a huge advocate of wealth. Like, do you want to be wealthy or, or do you want to be poor? Like, do you want to be a victor or do you want to be a victim? Like, if you want to be wealthy, which I hope you do, or you want cash flow, or you want money coming in while you're sleeping, I really think you should buy or invest in real estate like i'm not just a salesperson i'm an educator and an advocate for wealth like this is what i studied and this is what i know there's a huge gap you know i know that there's a very 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 huge distance between the rich and the poor but it's like where do you want to be and where do you see yourself you know whether you're middle class or or upper or lower, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for growing wealth. It, it doesn't matter if you're already wealthy or if you're like, you know, getting there, you can always acquire wealth. You just have to have a plan and a strategy and action behind, you know, that goal of I'm going to get wealthy or I'm going to acquire this wealth. What are you going to do to get there? Right. So yeah. you're going to call uh, an advocate, a real estate, someone who is die hard. Like, I know this works. This, this works. Like, it's not a secret. Like, look at the world around you. And this is exactly how you do it. A, A, B, C, one, two, three. And, and I, I definitely see myself as an advocate more so than, than just a, a salesperson, you know? Yeah. It's just, you know, the, the running thread in this whole conversation, even from social media aspect to now, even though technically that's why I walked me on, is the role of the, the agent going forward. And part of that is, do you, because there's so many resources already, I mean, you can sell on social media. You have sellbyowner.com, you have Julia, Zillow, name it, it, it exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that that means our role as well has changed. And I once again, I had Jason on here and Jason was talking about, you know, he doesn't see himself as the same thing. He doesn't see himself as a seller. He sees himself as an advocate for his client and for the industry because it's property now is a little bit more accessible as it was before. So being a being a resource for him is a little bit more important and standards connecting to that is more important and i'm hearing you now it sounds just like what jason said so i'm wondering if, do you think that that is going to be like going forward i agree with both of you i'm just wondering yeah. <laughs> you know is you can only hope for the best for society you know um humanities is you know that's why we study history you know that's why we educate ourselves but i mean at the end of the day it really comes down to the individual and their goals if they even have goals and what those goals are and what they want to pursue and um all it really takes is um uh tap into your reticular activation system that is all built into all of our brains. And if I say, oh, you know, I'm 
only going to focus on the color blue today. Everywhere I go, the color blue is going to stand out to me because that's how my human brain works. If I say, oh, I'm going to focus on becoming rich and focus on my wealth and, and figure out how I'm going to get there, the only things that are going to stand out to me are things that are going to make me wealthy. So it's like it really comes into just like you telling your brain and you taking action and you seeing it and envisioning it and making it a reality that's going to get you there. So it's like, of course, I would hope, you know, that people pursue wealth, you know, and then take this step and reach out to a resource such as myself or a resource such as yourself or Jason. And we would hope that, you know, if their reticular activation system is activated, then they and people know that we're the next step to their goal. That's, this is why I love having Kyle. <laughs> but no, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, going forward, we are going to have more resources. It means that our skills are more important than they were before. And you want an agent that will work with you in your best interest than the one who's just selling you stuff. Because, like I said, you just said that those times are not there anymore. You know, people can get an apartment on their own, so they can't. But having the advocacy, having someone there to explain what this looks like and to catch things that they normally would not catch is the important part that people tend to overlook why they need an agent or why they need a real estate advisor. There's things that they that we see that they probably won't pick up on. And having the investment part, which is so, which was always important to you. So I'm not going to sit here and say it was just something that happened haphazardly. That was always your thing. Having that the, the role of, of a longevity is important as well. Like you know, get begin an apartment, get an apartment. But if your end game is to build wealth, this is a great way to do it because of the sustainability that's connected to it. No matter what the market happens to the market, you still have property. And you can do a lot with that property. And that part there, I think, is really significant in, in, when it comes to building anything involving generational wealth or involving, you know, a social media presence or getting your license. That what is the end game here? If your goal is to build a community, then build the community. If your goal is to just be the persona, be the persona. So I, I want to thank you because we're going to have a, I told you from the very beginning of this that we're going to have a lot more of these. And, and you knew that. You thought I was joking and now you're back. Clearly I was not joking. But I am, I want to say this, I am very proud of you. I know you, I know you, you have a lot, and I know you, you have friends and everything, but uh, but I really wanted to say that as many times you need to hear it or you want to hear it, Thank I you. am very Thank proud you, of you girl. because the commitment you have to community, you can see it, you can hear it, there's an action behind it. So that's why for me, and I encourage everyone to look on, seriously, look at your Instagram and like the Kyle, the Kyle motivational videos. <laughs> they're just so like relaxed. Like they're not, there's no bells and whistles. There's nothing really like fancy or pretty. It's genuine. And even when you're talking about the listing, the listings are there, but you don't hide the listings. Like you let people know. You let them know this, this is this is how much it is, and this is how we got to that. You educate. And when you're in an industry like real estate, where a lot of it's brand awareness, you can build a brand without using yourself. Mm. And you found a way to do that, and I and I wanted to say thank you for that, and I'm very proud of it. Oh my God, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Of course, you've been good friends for a while, and um, you know, I'm looking to see both of us continue to evolve and progress on, on a daily basis, and I'm proud of you as well, and I'm uh, honored to be affiliated and a business partner and to, to be a good friend of yours, and um, I'm always here for you. 
Well, you do know we're gonna have to come back because there's like a few topics that I wrote down that I really think I should go over. So I'm gonna talk to you about those next week. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like you and I should do like a, a panel thing with your team and my team. Mm. And I think that would be really cool. Yeah, that would sound like a lot of fun. Definitely so, something I'm interested in. We should talk about that. But where should everyone find you? I've been on like 15 million times. Oh, say again? Where should everyone so, find you? Uh, where they can find me? Yes. Yes, so I can be found um, on Instagram via at Kyle, D-G-R-A, K-Y-L-E, D-G-R-A. Um, you can also Google Kyle Vasquez Realtor, and there's several resources there, such as my um, my site and so on. Uh, Vasquez is spelled V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z, -E and you just want to look up Kyle Vasquez Realtor. There'll be plenty of resources there. And you can also reach my office at 917-201-9358. If you're looking to take the next step into wealth, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to my office at 917-201-9358. Thank you so much to Paul Vasquez to come back on. And I will see everyone later. Bye. Ciao. I don't know.